part two of the video will be about synthesis of fullerenes. Fullerenes are the molecule that have only one carbon atom and it has various shapes. And these carbon atoms are interconnected in a hexagonal and pentagonal ring structures. Synthesis involves our discharge method, laser vaporization method, chemical vapor deposition method, ring staking model, and height process. First synthesis method is our discharge method. This method was conceptualized by Kretschmer and Huttmann in 1990. This process involves generating an electric R between the graphite rod that is cathode or anode in an inner atmosphere that is helium gas. So this electric arc will generate a fluffy condensate or soot. So the fraction of this fluffy condensate contain a toluene extractable fullerenes. So when this fluffy condensate that is deposited on the cathode, it is extracted and when it is treated with toluene and the toluene is evaporated in a rotary evaporated and the solid sample that contain the C60 and some higher members are obtained. That will further subject it to the liquid chromatography to obtain the pure C60. So the further production of fullerenes, alternating current discharge between the graphite electrode is used and the pressure of the helium gas is 200 tar. This discharge will produce a carbon suit which will contain up to 15% of C60 and some higher member that is C70 fullerenes. Synthesis by resistive arc heating of graphite. This method is somewhat similar to the first method. This method involves vaporization of carbon rod via resistive heating under helium atmosphere. So when the heat is produced by passing the electric current through the resistance of a conductor that is known as resistive heating and the power loss or the heat loss during this process is equal to I square R. So the resistive heating of carbon rod causes the rod to emit a faint gray white plume made up of fullerenes and this was collected on glass shield surrounding the carbon rod. So this was collected and further it was studied for C60 or C70. Second method is laser vaporization method in which we use laser irradiation in order to ablate the carbon target. So for the production of fullerenes, a typical apparatus with a pulse neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet laser that is operating at 532 nanometer is used. In this method, the fullerene are produced by pulse laser, which is focused on a graphite target in an inner atmosphere that is helium. So the process involves the vaporization of the carbon from the graphite target in a high density helium flow by laser and the target is placed in a tube furnace that is heated at 1200 degrees C and the flow of the inner gas is passed through the sample or passed through the ablated carbon to be collected at the cooler part of the apparatus. That is the flow of the inner gas passes through the growth chamber to propel the grown nanotubes or fullerenes downstream to be collected at the cooler finger. Second part of laser irradiation is synthesis by laser irradiation of polycyclic hydrocarbons. So in this case, we will use polycyclic hydrocarbons that has carbon 60s framework. So we do not need to be modified to the carbon 60. It is the main advantage of these polycyclic hydrocarbons. So it will produce directly 
the C60. So direct synthesis of fluorin have been developed as a mean for obtaining new homologs for the fluorin family. This approach for fluorin synthesis is based on polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon that already has required carbon framework. So it already has C60 carbon. Such PAH molecules are rolled up. So we only need the laser irradiation that is used to rolling up of this PAH and it will produce C60. So the mechanism or the pyrolysis mechanism involves flash vacuum pyrolysis. So the flash vacuum pyrolysis is a technique in organic synthesis that involves the heating of a precursor molecule intensely and briefly. So we will use laser light for heating of this precursor molecule and it will roll up into a C60. So two main parameters should be controlled that is temperature. So temperature and the duration of the heating time. These two are in the control limits. It has been reported that polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon which consists of 60 carbon atom form fluorine C60 when it is laser irradiated at 377 nanometer wavelength. So the laser irradiation will be done at 377 nanometer and it will produce 360. And the mechanism will be flash vacuum pyrolysis that is the heating of precursor molecule but two parameters should be intensively controlled that is temperature of and temperature of the sample or temperature of the system and the duration with which the sample is heated. Third method is chemical vapor deposition. For chemical vapor deposition, a catalyst material that is heated at high temperature in the furnace and the hydrocarbon gas and the substrate is needed. So the general nanotube growth mechanism involves the dissociation of hydrocarbon molecule. So the hydrocarbon molecule is entered into the reaction chamber when it is attached to the substrate in the presence of catalyst it is dissociated and it will produce a carbon. So the second step is dissolution and the subsequent saturation of the carbon atom. So in first step it is heated and the second step it is cool down. So while cooling down these carbon atoms get attached or get um, saturated on the substrate molecule. So the key parameter in the fluorine nanotubes, carbon nanotube growth are the types of hydrocarbons, catalyst and the growth temperature that are used. So these three parameters should be in control limit. High temperature are necessary to form small diameter nanotubes. One big advantage of the chemical vapor deposition method is that the fluorine nanotubes can be grown on the large quantity under the relatively well controlled conditions. Therefore, by controlling the condition for the synthesis by chemical vapor deposition, fluorine with desired application can be produced. So we can get the fluorines up to our desired application. Heat mechanism. In 1991, Heat proposed a mechanism in which the formation of fluorine takes place in four steps. And these four steps are given in step one. So in this step, the carbon atom formed by the vaporization of the graphite starts forming a chain length up to C10. So first step is the formation of a chain. The second step consists of the growth of the chain to a monocyclic ring. So the second step is the formation of monocyclic ring by this chain. Third step, the growth and the production of the three-dimensional carbon network takes place. So here the growth and production of the network of carbon will occur. Fourth step consists of the growth of small fluorines cage via shell closing mechanism that will produce C60, C70 and some large 
fullerenes as stable product last method for the synthesis of fullerene is ring staking model in 1992 wake beshi and co-workers proposed the growth mechanism for c60 and c70 they suggested that the fullerenes are formed following a ring staking model this model is about the production of fullerene c60 and c70 in this method a closed cage is formed by sequential staking of appropriate number of even number of carbon ring without any loss of the carbon atom so this is the starting material that is c10 and it will produce a two ring structure that is 5 5 ring structure when c18 is added to it after second step also c18 in third step c12 is added in fourth step the c2 is added if we add this c2 12 18 18 and 10 it will produce c60 in a similar way c16 c10 c20 c16 and 3c2 when these are added so it will produce 6 carbon 16 carbon 20 carbon 18 carbon and 10 carbon summing up these it will produce c70 